Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the Health Educator for the Johnson County Health Department. This presentation is about tetanus. Tetanus is a bacterial infection that affects the nervous system. The bacteria produces a toxin that causes muscles to tighten. This is why tetanus is also called lockjaw. The number of tetanus cases started declining in 1900, and it continued to decline in the 1930s and the 1940s due to a tetanus antitoxin for wound management. There were between 500 to 600 cases reported each year at the time of the vaccine introduction. The first version of the vaccine became routine in the late 1940s. Since 1947, there has been more than a 95% decline in reported cases and more than 99% decline in deaths related to tetanus. Now there is an average of about 30 reported cases each year in the United States. Tetanus is still common in some parts of the world. Tetanus is not spread person to person. It enters the body through skin opening exposures to spores of the bacterium Clostridium tetani. It is found in soil, dust, animal feces, and manure. It may enter through puncture wounds such as through piercings, tattoos, injection drug use, or stepping on a nail. It may enter through burns or gunshot wounds. It may rarely enter the body from unclean surgeries, compound fractures, infected ulcers, animal or insect bites, or through dental infections. The incubation period for tetanus is anywhere from 3 to 21 days, with an average of 10 to 14 days. Symptoms may include headache, jaw stiffness, neck stiffness, abdominal muscle stiffness, muscle spasms, restlessness or irritability, difficulty swallowing, sweating, fever, seizures, high blood pressure, or abnormal heartbeat. Infections that occur sooner after exposure are usually more severe with a worse prognosis. Tetanus is diagnosed through a physical examination, medical and immunization history, recent injury history, and a symptom check. There are no lab tests for confirmation. There is no cure for tetanus once symptoms start. Treatment after symptoms start is focused on managing the complications until the effects wear off. It is important to get a tetanus shot on the day of injury if you have not had a tetanus shot within the last 10 years for a minor wound or none within 5 years for a more serious wound. You should get a booster shot if you are not sure when you had your last vaccine. Also be sure to clean the wound as soon as possible to remove the dirt and foreign objects. You may receive tetanus immune globulin to neutralize the toxins that have not yet bonded to nerve tissue, antibiotics to fight bacteria, or other medication to control muscle spasms or regulate heartbeat and breathing. You may need surgical debridement to remove dead or infected tissue or a ventilator to assist with breathing. Those who are at high risk of developing tetanus include those who are unvaccinated, adults who are not up to date on their boosters, or having an injury allowing tetanus spores in the wound or introduction of a foreign body such as a nail. Possible complications from tetanus may include spasms of the breathing muscles, tightening of the vocal cords, broken bones, blood clots in the lung, pneumonia, brain damage, secondary infections, coma, or death, which occurs in approximately 10 to 20 percent of tetanus cases. You should see a doctor if you have a wound that had soil contact or contact with a dirty object, especially if you are not up to date on your vaccinations. You should also see a doctor if the wound appears dirty or infected, such as being red, swollen, hot to touch, or painful. See a doctor if you develop symptoms, and also see a doctor for your routine vaccine boosters. The best way to prevent tetanus is through vaccination. The DTAP, or DT, should be given to those ages 6 years of age and younger. The TDAP, or TD, should be given to those 7 years of age and older. It is recommended that children receive their doses at ages 2, 4, and 6 months, between 15 to 18 months, and between 4 to 6 years of age. It is recommended that adolescents receive a dose between ages 11 to 12. Adults should receive a dose of TD every 10 years with only one lifetime dose of Tdap. This is an exception for pregnant women who should receive a Tdap during each pregnancy for the pertussis component. 
You may catch up on doses later if you have not previously been immunized, and you may get a vaccination on the day of injury. Indiana requires the vaccine for kindergarten through 12th grade enrollment. Many colleges require it as well. There is no lifelong protection with the vaccine or with infection. It is important to have good wound care. Don't delay first aid, regardless of how minor a break in the skin may be. Keep it clean and protected, and wash your hands often with soap and water. Follow up with a doctor if needed. This concludes the tetanus presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact your doctor, local health department, or visit any of these websites. Thank you.